Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Magnetic Excursion Update Monday, November 3rd, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. The full supermoon, beaver moon, will be rising in just a few days. Tomorrow it will look full, and we've got other things to look at. A giant coronal hole number 94 will be coupling with Earth in just a few days. Geomagnetic storm watch there. And an active region turning around the limb, which will be geo-effective later this week, just produced an M5.0 solar flare. A lot to talk about, so buckle up, buttercup, and keep calm. It's boom time. California storm to bring strong winds and widespread rain to parts of the state. We're going to see some high elevation snow as well. The full model is coming up in just a moment. Snow in Metro Detroit as well over the weekend. The first flakes expected to fall soon. A quick look over at TornadoHQ.com Live shows we've got several special marine warnings over the Northeast uh, like a beast. And if we pan the... The map out here, you can see that atmospheric river moving into the Pacific Northwest now, bringing snow to much of the heavy elevations, the higher elevations, my bad. And here is the full forecast atmospheric river to begin to impact the Northwest U.S. with gusty winds in the Northeast. A strong atmospheric river moving into Northern California later Tuesday will bring a threat from moderate to heavy rainfall and flooding Gusty to high winds and mountain snows for parts of the northwest U.S. through at least Wednesday. Gusty winds and isolated rain and snow showers will continue in the northeast U.S. Tuesday behind a cold front, which is now moving offshore. Al Gore is a bore. Here is the GFS model, and we can see some of that moisture in the east. Three, six. By morning, it's gone. We're going to see some re residual snow in the higher elevations uh, as another atmospheric river lines up here Wednesday for the Pacific Northwest, and then another one right behind it on Friday, and we've got a line of storms in the east here early in the weekend. That's Saturday, and we've got snow dipping way down into the U.S. Let's take a look at total snowfall. This is fantastic. This is just through November 9th, 10th, and 11th. So this is the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Wow. So, And then boom! By the, by the third week of November, we could see a huge pulse in the West. And well, all the ski resorts will be open by the end of November, in my opinion. Especially if this comes true for Archuleta County. Russia's first minus 40C sold to minus 2.8C. Record November snow in China. Holy macaroni. On November 3rd, Konstantinovskaya, Russia plunged to minus 40 C. That's minus 40 Fahrenheit, the nation's first minus 40 C of the season. The reading came from Russia's far northeast and eastern Yakutia. As Arctic air tightens its grip across Siberia, widespread lows below minus 30 C were recorded in the Saka Republic with several stations nearing minus 35 C or minus 31 Fahrenheit. This year's first minus 40 C arrives earlier than average as per Ogamet Snya archives with its typical not seen until mid-November. So it's getting chilly up there in Siberia. Seismic update! A major rumbler in the Kamchatka has created multiple aftershocks. Well, it was just a 6.1, uh, but apparently in an area that needed to release some pressure. Lots of aftershocks happening from this quake. Good news, uh, very low-level activity worldwide. This is bad news here in Turkey, a 5.0. That's going to cause some damage and maybe some fatalities. And we do have a little uptick here in Chile with a 5.5 at 24 kilometers. Hopefully nothing develops there. What's this? New Mexico, a 3.2 in Los Hoyos. Wow, are some of those volcanic vents reinvigorating over New Mexico? I certainly hope not. We're going to keep a close eye on all this activity for you as things progress. 
And talking about progressing, Kilauea is entering the 36th episode of Lava Fountaining since Christmas Eve last year. It's been ongoing, and the last phase has quieted down, but in the next 24 hours it will kick up again, and the major lava fountaining will happen in the next three days. So we're going to be going live once again on Rumble. We live stream this all day while Rex and I were up in the high country hiking up literally uh, a vertical slope. It was insane. It was brutal. It was uh, punishing. The whole time I was hiking up, I was saying, why are we doing this? And the whole time down, I was saying, why are we doing this? <laughs> well, because of the spectacular waterfalls, the views... Oh, it's just insane. Stay tuned for more updates on that. Worldwide Volcano News. We've got White Island, the first on the list today. 4,000-foot blast. Semadu, who knew? Now you do. An eruption reported today. Madapi to 11,000 feet. Ongoing volcanic ash at Raventador. Possible volcanic ash at Sangay. Ongoing volcanic ash at Fuego. Santa Guito to 16,000 feet. White Island, continuous eruption to 4,000. Semadu, an eruption was reported. Popo to 20,000 feet. We've got Shishaldin on the list. Volcanic ash, not identifiable. Raventador, ongoing volcanic ash. Krasya Ninikov, 8,000 foot puff today. Sangay to 20,000 feet. Semadu, who knew? Now you do. An eruption was reported. Fuego, ongoing volcanic ash. Popo to 20,000 feet, wrapping up the list. And that brings us to space weather. A long-duration flare reaching M5 threshold. R2 radio blackout was observed around newly assigned AR4274, located near the northeast limb, peaking at 1011 UTC today. The event initially peaked around M1.6, but then set off an apparent wider eruption, and a coronal mass ejection is now emerging. The event was responsible for a fairly Fairly significant halo coronal mass ejection. We've got the modeling up for you. We also have the visuals of the M long duration 5.01. This is probably actually an X flare. And this region needs to face Earth so we can get some real readings. So you can see that active region over here, coronal hole. All this coupled together, we could see some one-two punches in the coming days to send us into some major geomagnetic storming. Currently, the geomagnetic forecast showing G1 geomagnetic storm for November 6th. That's care of the coronal hole stream. But if we got some CMEs coming in from this baby, and here is the first one that's modeled headed away from Earth, but will be accentuating that coronal hole stream when it does hit on the 7th, we could be seeing some significant geomagnetic storming this week. So stay tuned for the boom. Interstellar Comet 3i Atlas can now be seen from Earth even by amateur telescopes. So we're going to be seeing more images in the coming days and weeks. And people are asking, why are there no high-resolution images coming from NASA? What are they hiding? Well, they're not hiding anything. There are no high-resolution images of Comet 3i Atlas. It is very far away, and it is moving away at extreme speeds. So, if you're looking for a high-resolution image of this comet, don't hold your breath. But do hold your breath for November's supermoon, a supermoon boom. The largest supermoon of the year, the beaver moon, supermoon boom, will be the biggest and brightest full moon of 2025. It rose tonight on schedule. It will rise tomorrow night, one hour later, and so on and so forth. And tomorrow night will be the first time it appears full. So we're going to get a three-day supermoon, beaver moon, boom. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the moon will appear full. It will be the largest ever of the year, and it will be spectacular. So get out and look up. It rose tonight early when Rex and I were just leaving the mountain. So it will be early all for the next three days. It'll be like 5 o'clock rising for us here in the mountains, 6 o'clock tomorrow, 7 o'clock, and 8 o'clock. And, well, it will be fantastic. Rex and I took an amazing hike today uh, from about 10,000 feet to about 12,000 feet. 
We went 5.2 miles. It was brutal. And here is the hike on Strava. So we drove as high as we could on a Jeep trail until we had to stop. Then we traversed an old logging road um, across a washout. And then we went directly straight up into the San Juan wilderness. It was like climbing a staircase for two miles continuously until we got to this little call. It was fantastic. This, this area had really high speed winds. Uh, and the descent was just as brutal because it's so steep. Well, you get the picture, but it was fantastic. The visuals were well worth it. And even though it felt like we were being punished, we were actually being rewarded. You want to be rewarded, check out Starlink for Homes. This is the best offer Elon Musk has this week. Service starting just at $80 a month for the best high-speed internet on the planet. And you get no upfront hardware costs. That means Starlink is free. That is a $500 plus savings from the way it was initially laid out. So you don't have to pay for the hardware. And you get free professional setup. Yeah. This is, go get it. Support the channel. Support your internet. Support your soul. If, you're, if you have slow speeds, you have outages, that's not how Starlink works. It's been amazing for the last five years. And that's a boom to knowledge. Thanks for watching. Please support the channel. The best thing you guys can do is hit the su subscribe button. We're trying to get to 100,000 subs by the end of the year, which is a pipe dream, but you can help by hitting that subscribe button. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And that is a boom. I'm going to sleep like a baby. <laughs>